How can a comedic relief character from one of the most popular and critically acclaimed shows ever made get his own spin-off series that's as good and some might argue even better than the original? A lot of shows try to expand their franchise. Some actually succeeded, like Game of Thrones with House of the Dragon, and The Walking Dead with Daryl Dixon and the city, and the currently airing The Ones Who Lives, and some unfortunately didn't, like the 90s sitcom Friends with the spin-off show Joey focusing on the character Joey Tribbiani. But no matter how good the spin-offs are, it is quite hard to live up to the legacy made by the original and make a name for themselves outside of the bubble of it being just a spin-off. Especially if it's a franchise beloved by fans like the ones I just mentioned. But in the case of Better Call Saul, it's a completely different story. Employee of the month over here! Yeah! Hooray! Give him a medal! After five years of great must-see television, 2013 saw the end of Breaking Bad with probably the most thrilling and exciting final seasons in TV history. Throughout its entire runtime, Breaking Bad won an impressive 92 awards, including 16 Emmys, and it even secured a place in the Guinness World Records in 2014 as the most critically acclaimed show ever. Clearly, anything associated with Breaking Bad faces the daunting challenge of living up to its legacy. However, to see if any show could meet that standard didn't last long, because in 2015 the Breaking Bad spin-off series Better Call Saul premiered, and with its debut episode, it drew a staggering 6.88 million viewers on AMC in the United States. To put it in perspective, the first episode of Breaking Bad only drew 1.4 million viewers. And that's of course because of Breaking Bad's popularity at the time, and all those 6 million viewers were fans of the original show. That is good news to the network, who doesn't want big numbers, right? But what happened was that people came in with the expectations that we are getting something like Breaking Bad with this show, but what we got was something slow. Something different. Something quite unique. A lot of people dropped the series with only half of those 6.88 million viewers watching the second episode. And only 2.5 million people stayed for the finale of the first season. And the viewership kept declining with each passing season. There is actually a simple and clear reason for that. People were used to the fast-paced writing of Breaking Bad and they couldn't handle what this show is trying to be nor give it a chance to justify its existence. So how did this show come to life? While season 5 of Breaking Bad was airing, and in April 2013 specifically, the Peter Colesall project got announced. Vince Gilligan and Peter Gold, the brilliant minds behind Breaking Bad and co-creators of Better Call Saul, decided to make a series that not only respected its origins but also stood on its own two feet. From the start, the creators gambled to prioritize depth over spectacle and they envisioned the show that delved into the complexities of its characters, focusing on their personal and professional lives, and this vision was a departure from Breaking Bad's action-packed, story-driven narrative. Peter Call Saul gradually established itself as a show that was not afraid to take its time, allowing characters to develop organically within a narrative that elegantly balanced the humor, tragedy, and the mundane realities of life. This approach that the creators came up with allowed viewers to inhabit the characters' worlds and understand their motivations and fears and desires on a profoundly intimate level. What most people didn't realize is that we were watching a character drama, and it was something we didn't have with Breaking Bad. But what exactly is a character drama? A basic definition I came up with 
It is a show that develops a complex narrative that draws out something in the characters and the actors playing those characters that was not clear on the surface. These kind of programs are more challenging to watch because they feature a totally rich in dialogue, often with multiple layers of meaning, and they use the visual medium to its fullest extent. Relatively, few shows are character-driven, and most shows are story- or effect-driven. A lot of its appeal depends on shocking viewers with plot twists and action spectacle. To some extent, the actors are presented as a product, and this doesn't necessarily mean that these kind of shows are bad. That's just what the industry needs, because according to the numbers, they are the most watched and successful ones. And when we get a show like Peter Call Soul, people get confused and they don't get its appeal, because it is different from what they were used to. And to be frank, the story of a struggling lawyer in a nowhere desert town who is torn between making an honest living and scumping to a life of minor crimes just isn't going to win over everyone. You gonna gum me to that, huh, geezer? Other than being a character-driven show, Bitter Call Soul is mostly a prequel of Breaking Bad, and the only sequel elements of the show are the black and white shots that we get through the series. So knowing that, there is no big stake here. What are the chances of the death of a character that's going to show up again in Breaking Bad? Unless there was an evil twin lurking all along, but spoiler alert, there's no evil twin here. Of all the danger Jimmy is going to go through in the series or any other character that's already showed up in Breaking Bad, no one is in real danger, obviously. And knowing that, it's already a turn-off for most people. And if it's a turn-off for you too, then you are watching this show for the wrong reasons. Woo, that's a beautiful red snap eyes wonderment, I guarantee! Wow, it's, it's like I'm in the bio. Even though, yes, it is a prequel series, Peter Call Saul isn't just about tracing Jimmy McGill's journey to becoming Saul Goodman, the man we know and love in Breaking Bad. It's about immersing viewers in the intricacies of each character's life and motivations. As we follow Jimmy's transformation to Saul, we're also drawn into the rich narratives that define characters like Kim Wexler and Mike Ehrmantraut. Kim's struggle with professional ambition and moral compromise and Mike's pragmatic approach to navigating the criminal underworld offer distinct arcs brimming with depth and complexity. And that's what truly sets Better Call Saul apart. It's the attention to detail and ensuring that every character's actions stem from a profound understanding of their past and desires. And as the series unfolds, these individual stories intertwine in unexpected ways revealing the interconnectedness of their lives and the ripple effects of their choices. This type of storytelling not only enriches the characters, but also elevates the series into a profound exploration of the human experience. Hi, I'm Saul Goodman. Did you know that you have rights? The Constitution says you do, and so do I. Bitter Call Saul is all about character writing. That's not to say that Breaking Bad characters were poorly written, rather it's that their motivations were often straightforward and easily understandable, making their actions justifiable. For example, comparing the two main characters of the shows, Walter White comes out to be a genius pushover who gets a taste for power and goes mad for it, and Jimmy McGill is a man who lives in his brother's shadow, trying to balance out his lust for deception with his need to be a better person that everybody wants him to be. Jimmy McGill is a more complex character than Walter White, and I'm not aiming to diminish the quality of the character development in Breaking Bad. Each character, from Walter White, to Jesse's friends, who had very limited role in the show, were brilliantly written. Breaking Bad was undeniably a flawless show, but its perfection stems from different factors compared to why Better Call Saul is also, in my opinion, the perfect show. One notable aspect that really caught my attention in the series is how it navigates the concept of nostalgia. Usually when a beloved property receives a spin-off, whether it's a prequel or a sequel or a standalone project, it heavily relies on nostalgia to engage and attract viewers. However, Peter Call Saul takes a nuanced approach. While it does incorporate elements of nostalgia or fan service, 
These moments are integrated to either foreshadow events that will unfold in Breaking Bad or to drive the characters and plot forward. I'm not going to get into details obviously because this is a spoiler free video, so skip into the nostalgia talk. The most important thing that set both shows apart and it elevates Peter Cole's soul from great to perfect is the use of the camera. Watching this show is basically watching a living art museum. Peter Cole's soul excels in its use of visual storytelling. The way the series is filmed is truly remarkable and shows after the challenge of the people who made it. Using the camera to convey emotions, transitions, and the internal states of the characters without relying solely on dialogue is a hard thing to do. Every frame, every scene is put together with so much care using bright and deep colors along with interesting camera angles that make you feel like you're right there with the characters. And this careful attention to how the show looks makes Better Call Saul not just a great story, but a feast for the eyes. Proving that how a story is told visually can be just as powerful as the story itself. This show is more than just a prequel to Breaking Bad. With this project, the Gilligan team has taken the unusual dark comedic edge that Breaking Bad had and are exploring it through this series. The result? is a story that focuses on human nature more than anything, which stands out for its narrative quality in the way it interweaves backstory with comedy and drama in clever but often subtle ways. By prioritizing character development over sensational plot twists, not that there isn't any, the series offers a unique and introspective look at the human condition. It requires some effort and thought to enjoy. And yes, some people don't want to work that hard. But for people who don't mind that, Better Call Saul is a gift. For viewers willing to invest in its slow burn narrative, Better Call Saul is more than just television. It's a deeply rewarding experience that challenges and expands our understanding of storytelling. I'm actually gonna rewatch Breaking Bad and Bitter Cold Soul with my girlfriend soon because she's never seen it and it's been about 5 years since I watched them, might as well refresh my memory. So I'm looking forward to re-experience that with her. And that's about it, I hope you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to support the channel, and yeah, see you next time.